This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Stefan Möbius, Edgar Rice Burroughs, The Princess of Mars, Chapter 28 At the Arizona Cave It was dark when I opened my eyes again. Strange, stiff garments were upon my body, garments that cracked and powdered away from me as I rose to a sitting posture. I felt myself over from head to foot, and from head to foot I was clothed, though when I fell unconscious at the little doorway I had been naked. Before me was a small patch of moonlit sky, which showed through a ragged aperture, as my hands passed over my body, they came in contact with pockets, and in one of these a small parcel of matches wrapped in oiled paper. One of these matches I struck, and its dim flame lighted up what appeared to be a huge cave, toward the back of which I discovered a strange, still figure huddled over a tiny bench. As I approached it, I saw it was the dead and mummified remains of a little old woman with long black hair and the thing it leaned over was a small charcoal burner upon which rested a round copper vessel containing a small quantity of greenish powder. Behind her, depending from the roof upon rawhide thongs, and stretching entirely across the cave, was a row of human skeletons. From the thong which held them stretched another to the dead hand of the little old woman. As I touched the cord, the skeleton swung to the motion with a noise as of the rustling of dry leaves. It was a most grotesque and horrid tableau, and I hastened out into the fresh air, glad to escape from so gruesome a place. The sight that met my eyes as I stepped out upon a small ledge which ran before the entrance of the cave filled me with consternation. A new heaven and a new landscape met my gaze. The silvered mountains in the distance the almost stationary moon hanging in the sky, the cacti-studded valley below me, were not of Mars. I could scarcely believe my eyes, but the truth slowly forced itself upon me. I was looking upon Arizona from the same ledge from which ten years before I had gazed with longing upon Mars. Burying my head in my arms, I turned, broken and sorrowful, down the trail from the cave. Above me shone the red eyes of Mars, holding her awful secret forty-eight million miles away. Did the Martians reach the pump room? Did the vitalizing air reach the people of that distant planet in time to save them? Was my Dejah Taurus alive? Or did her beautiful body lie cold in death beside the tiny golden incubator in the sunken garden of the inner courtyard of the palace of Tardomor, the Jeddak of Helium? For ten years I have waited and prayed for an answer to my questions. For ten years I have waited and prayed to be taken back to the world of my lost love. I would rather lie dead beside her there than live on earth all those millions of terrible miles from her. The old mine, which I found untouched, has made me fabulously wealthy, but what care I for wealth? As I sit here tonight, in my little study overlooking the Hudson, just twenty years have elapsed since I first opened my eyes upon Mars. I can see her shining in the sky through the little window by my desk, and tonight she seems calling to me again, as she has not called before since that long dead night, and I think I can see across that awful abyss of space a beautiful black-haired woman standing in the garden of a palace, and at her side is a little boy who puts his arm around her as she points into the sky towards the planet Earth while at their feet is a hideous creature with a heart of gold. I believe that they are waiting there for me, and something tells me that I shall soon know. End of chapter 28 The End of The Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs